Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Pentecast Podcast. My name is Andrew Bella. Alongside me is my good friend, Ryan Sellers. Howdy, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the podcast, and uh, we're glad to see each and every one of you hopping on here listening to the program. Ryan, what has been going on, my friend? Oh, just living the dream. Absolutely. How about you? Uh, I've been living the nightmare. Yeah, you know? nightmares yeah. are dreams, too. <laughs> they all come true, don't this they? This little thing called COVID. Oh, my goodness. C-O-V-I-D. Man. Yeah, it seems like it's worse this year uh, as far as just uh, it rocking on and also just the the, the lives that it's taken that I know, yep. uh, people personally. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just something we all want it to just disappear, away. vanish, get out of our lives, our yes, everyday sir. lives, man. Yes, sir. Um, but it's it's here, and it looks like it's here to stay for a little while. So um, with that said, there's a lot of things that are here to stay. Yep. A lot of things, heartache, trouble. We live in a fallen world. Mm-hmm. We live in a fallen world. And what I mean by that is sin is ever-present. It's not going anywhere. Um, you know, we did an episode back with the whole George Floyd situation, yes, and we, we, n- we titled it Our Two Cents for Today's Topics. Mm-hmm. And uh, really, we could have put, if, if pennies were less, if there was anything less in currency that we could put our half cents or whatever because I don't think my opinion matters much in the political realm or spectrum. Or does mine. There's so much going on. There really is. If you think about everything that's going on in the world on top of COVID, um, it, it is easy as a business owner, which you are, it's easy as somebody that just works in the public to get overwhelmed. Sure. Right? Absolutely. It's easy to, just as you're saying, to focus on the turmoil of every day. You know, as a business owner in this crazy pandemic, you really don't know from day to day in a consumer customer role as our business is. You you don't know what the future holds from a week week to week basis. There, uh, this leads into what we're talking about: mm-hmm. the peace of God, for sure. Well, um, and and that's going to be the topic of discussion today between you and I, experiencing the peace of God. That passes all understanding. Mm-hmm. We've heard it preached. We've heard it talked about. Um, but when you experience it, you know there is no substitute, in my opinion, for experience. Uh, I agree. I've said a long time ago, you know, in my preaching, I've I've said to the congregations that I preached, God has never laid a message on my heart to tell you how to raise your teenage children mm-hmm. or your teenagers because I've never done that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so God has always allowed me to implement my experience to try to help somebody. Sure. I don't I don't think that I'm qualified to tell somebody how to lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> because I haven't experienced it and kept it. You know what I mean? We're working on it though. Those, we are. Those New Year's resolutions that we promised you eight <laughs> months ago. We finally Let's got just down delete to that them. episode. Right? I know it was on there somewhere. We just can't uh-huh. find it. We deleted it, folks. It won't be long. You know, sometimes we record two or three episodes at the time. There may be a three week gap between our recording. Well, that's you, you that, may not even recognize. Exactly. Us. Well, that's actually why that I have it. It may look like the camera adds like fifteen pounds. I heard, but the ones that I bought add fifty. And um, you know, people are probably wondering. You know, hey, I thought they said that they were going to be losing weight. Well, not you. You don't need to lose weight. I thought Andrew said he was going to be losing weight. Well, for all you folks know, is this could be January right now that we've recorded this thing. We've just been waiting until the end of August to record it Mm -hmm. or or submit it. I can hold up my phone to show you the date. It's not January. (laughs) I know. know. And here here we are talking about COVID and everything else. So experience, understanding this, that there is no substitute for experience. I want to be able to help somebody um, by my experience. Mm -hmm. I've experienced the peace of God in a tumultuous world in which we find ourselves in. Honestly, you know, you're one of my best friends. However, I pray for your restaurant every weekend. I really do. We need it. And uh, it's not just just your restaurant, but I pray for other businesses as well that are that are being faced and hit with uncertainty. Who knows, Ryan, if the governor's not going to come on and say, hey, all businesses shut down again. Yeah. Well, that that doesn't affect everybody, but it directly affects you. Sure. What's your anchor? How do you make it through times like this? It's the peace of God that passes all understanding. Yeah. 
It's the peace of God. The first scripture that I want to read to kind of lay the groundwork of what we are going to be discussing, I like to use the word to uh, lay the groundwork, is in Philippians 4, and starting in verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so it says, The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds. Um, you know, Jesus, when he was talking, he would say things such as, let not your heart be troubled. You know, uh, the apostle Paul would preach about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. And then he would go through this, the list of things that we can do to make sure that our minds are right. Mm -hmm. So that lets us know how important it is to have your mind and your heart subject to Christ. And the way that we accomplish that, according to the word of God, is to have the peace of God ruling in our hearts and in our minds. So whenever you hear the words, the peace of God that passes all understanding, what what do you think of when you hear that word? I think about experience, just okay. like what you said. I think about times in my life when I have experienced that peace and passes all understanding. You can't comprehend it. You can't explain it. You can't... Uh, it's like it. almost like out of place. Yeah, and it's abstract. You can't... You can't touch it you know it's not tangible but you sure know how it feels what it feels like and when you've been in situations where it was total chaos except for the presence of God himself that was the only reassurance the only comfort the only anchor you cling to that mm -hmm. that that makes a note in your brain and in your soul mm -hmm. that you never ever ever forget it well you know, and we've exhausted your testimony on here, and we've exhausted mine. We've beat that dead horse quite a bit. Mm -hmm. um, but in your testimonies, when you, when you were um, when you were just talking, while I was looking at you, I was thinking of the things that you've you've been through in your life, and you've been through a lot of hardship, uh, things that were not your fault that have sure. happened that you've allowed God to help you with, mm -hmm. and, and don't ever underestimate that. No. So I'm sitting here thinking, well, when did Ryan first experience the peace of God that passed all understanding? Was it when he was a little boy, or was it after he got married? Uh, I, and I knew what we were going to talk about, so I was thinking about this today. Probably the one of the first times is when I got saved. Oh, I yeah. mean, just in, if it would do us all good to think back to, to that act when we got saved, when you get up and everybody looks different. You hug people. Can't find a fault in anybody. You can't find a fault in anyone. You love everyone that you see. Yeah. Hey, and I'll I'll say this: terrible preachers that you hear, and and I say that jokingly, but yeah. preachers that probably aren't your favorite. I'm probably on your list that you thought, "Wow, that was a great message." Mm -hmm. You know, you just got saved because <laughs> in about two or three months, you're like, yeah. "I don't ever want to hear that uh, guy uh, preach again." And you get churched enough. I know. <laughs> oh, here's this guy. He's gonna preach. He's like the preacher that says, "Oh, church." Oh, church, uh, just linger here, church. Mm -hmm. yeah, do I have anybody that's willing to wait another five minutes? Raise your hand. He goes, oh, no. okay, 5, 10, 15, 20. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm about to shoot myself or I'm getting, <laughs> I'm jiggling my keys ready to go. Yeah. You know, but yeah, that feeling of that fresh salvation. Yeah. You know, and then the baptism of the Holy Ghost was another thing. It was just totally changed my life, mm -hmm. changed um, every perspective. You know, you know, as a Christian, you know that God loves you. You know that God knows your name. You know that you're his child. But there are times as a Christian that it is proven to you. You see it. You feel it. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that he really does know my name. Yeah. He really is concerned about my daily life. As Brother Jody often says, if it concerns us, it concerns him. No doubt. And there are times you know that. But there are times that it is proven to you. You feel it in your spirit, and that's a whole different dimension. Yeah, yeah, you're so right. Something you said um, last week, I believe it was, on the podcast, you were talking about not being a slave to circumstance. Mm -hmm. And 
when you experience the peace of God, it 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 literally prevents you from being a slave sure. to circumstance. Sure. Because you, you literally you're looking around going, any other time in my life, this would have took me under. Mm-hmm. But there's something else in me that's carrying me yeah. that is not within my own strength. That's right. In the word, there's no error in God's word. The peace of God that passes on understanding is exactly what it means. Mm-hmm. You don't even understand mm-hmm. how you're even able to stand right. in in the circumstance that you find and, yourself and, in. And just like Sister Frankie Smith testified tonight, we're recording on Sunday night. She testified, you know, I look, oh, they tore I, me up. I look back at where I've come from, and I look back and say, how did I make it through that? It's God. It's the peace of God yeah. holding my hand. And what a warrior there. Oh, I know. And, and, and I thought about that when she testified the same thing. Even her, as godly of a woman sure. as she is, to lose both of her sons. 23 days apart. 23 days apart. And I think. And her, uh, uh, her husband uh, a year later, 14 yeah. months later. Yeah. It lo- pretty much lost everything other than her daughter that's still here. Yep. And Not to mention she almost died herself. Yeah, exactly. She's She's been hit, hit with heartache. Yeah. You know, her being bro- a farmer's brother wife. just passed away. That's exactly right. She's been hit with blow after blow. But like you said in church, she's, she uh, she testifies and says, I don't know how I made it. Yeah. I don't know how I made it. And the it, peace it, of God. And it's not coming from a from a defeated woman. No, Lord. No. Not at all. No. No, you're, you're looking at a battle-hardened oh, warrior yeah. is what you yeah. are. Yeah. You're looking at, you know, I appreciate saints of God in churches more now than I ever have and for whatever reason, even you know, people at Blanchard, whenever I first got saved, they can testify to this. But I always took to the elders. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a brother Holden experience. Yes, uh, he was a boxcar racer. He served in in our, our military station in Hawaii. He had stories. I remember one of my days off that uh, from from working, I went and got uh, I went over to his house, and he pulled two root beers out of the fridge, mm-hmm. and me and him played checkers. And I sat there with him, and he was just such an interesting man. Mm -hmm. I I like learning from people's experience, where they've been. I don't want – it's like Dave Ramsey always says, don't get marital advice from your uncle that's been married 14 times. I want want somebody who's experienced – that's what the title is, experiencing the peace of God, that that is going to put a hunger in me to go, you know what? There's times that that would have carried me a lot further than what I mm-hmm. allowed myself. And I think if we glean from people that have experienced what it's like to have the peace of God ruling in their hearts and minds like the Scripture tells us, I think it's going to make us a better person. And also, it's going to help carry us to another level yeah. that we didn't even think was possible. I agree. Finally, brethren, this is still in Philippians, okay? One of my favorite verses. Finally, brethren... Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and see in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. So there is something for you and I to do. You know, I think we get caught up in this. I hate even using the word charismatic because immediately people think you're throwing off on anybody. We have no stones to throw. I mean, it's like one man told me, he said, I'm just an ignorant man trying to make it to heaven. Well, Mm -hmm. guess what? There's two of us now. Yep. Um, Three. Who's who's the third? Me. Well, that's... Well, I mean, I was one, two plus that guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Three's a crowd, right? Yeah, obviously, that just proved my point. I'm like, wait, where's the third one? <laughs> but yeah, so we're pretty dumb trying to make it to heaven. So, to say the least, I have no stones to throw, man. I'm not uh, the smartest guy out there, nor am I. But I, I read the Bible. And uh, I try to figure things out. I try to glean from people with experience. But there is something for us to do. This this thing that people think, oh, I just got caught up in the third heaven, and oh, I'm on an extra level and all this stuff. To me, I'm, I'm, I'm too stupid to understand all that, okay? Just tell me, give me the meat. And so 
I don't want to look at experiencing the peace of God like, oh, and then my feet elevated off the ground and and I was carried in and in, into the upper chamber of the celestial city. Of the most high. You know, where where I experienced the peace of God that passes all understanding. I was headed to Texas because I just found out my dad had a blood clot and he was in the ER. It, it was really, really serious. He was, you know, battling with alcohol terribly. And I remember getting to the exit. We were coming into Tyler, Texas, so I was getting close to, to Dallas. And I remember driving. I was I was actually in the passenger seat, and my wife was driving. And I'm 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 okay. All right, I'm okay. Ish. I'm all right. You know what I mean. I've been better. But my one year old daughter I only had one kid at the time. She's in the back. She's she's good. Amy is just stone faced, and shocked. Well, she's keeping it together because oh, she's man. like, this guy, and yeah. <laughs> my husband's a ticking time bomb. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting over there trying to process this stuff. And when we get to the Tyler, Texas exit, and it's really a monumental moment for me, is because this is where I experienced the peace of God that passed all understanding for the very first time. I, I go to, we drive past the exit. My aunt calls me, and usually when my aunt answers the phone or, or whenever she calls me, it's she always calls me Drew Do for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Aunt Cindy. But she always had these words, you know, hey, Drew Do is what she called me, or hey, Drew. But when she answered the phone, it, she didn't say anything. Mm-hmm. And I said, hello, hello. And she said, Andrew, where are you? And I knew when she said that there was something wrong. Mm-hmm. And I knew my dad had went into a coma uh, that morning, but I didn't know that he was going to die. But she was there at the hospital with my sister. I was getting there as fast as I could. And she she said, Andrew, where are you? And I knew something was wrong. I said, I'm in Tyler, Texas. I'm, I'm you know, we were driving 100 miles an hour, you know. I, I, I literally was going as fast as I could. And I said, I'm doing the best I can. I'm trying to get there. I really am. And then she said this. She said, slow down. And I said, why? She said, there's no use in you driving any faster, Andrew. He's not good. And I said, okay. And I started processing it, trying to be big boy on the phone. I said, okay. And that made me drive even faster. And when I got off the phone with her, I immediately, like, this wail, this, this, this anguish came out of me. And I was looking out the window, and my wife grabbed my hand, and she started praying immediately. My daughter's sleeping at this time, and I remember being in utter anguish, holding on to the seatbelt of the car, just gripping it, looking out of the window going, oh, God, this is really happening. This is really happening. My dad was 49, and and I remember thinking he never got to meet his granddaughter because of alcohol. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I had so much immediate bitterness, hatred rising up, but for a little space of time in that car, I knew there was something that entered into that car that was not my own strength. And it literally, something come in that car, the peace came in that car. I immediately calmed down, and I just put my hands on my lap, and we drove in. And the peace of God never left me until when we were driving up to the funeral. And and I had to preach a, a portion of his funeral. And before the funeral, I thought I was going to lose my mind. I literally went to my wife. We were on the way. And I said, if anybody's ever been close to losing their mind, I, I said, I literally feel like I'm fixing to have a mental breakdown. Like, check me into a place. And then we started praying. Mm-hmm. And when we pulled up to the parking lot where I was going to uh, have his funeral, I took a breath, got out of the car, and not one time did anxiety or mm-hmm. anything come over me. Those instances that happened to me, there's not a devil in this world that can convince me that it wasn't God. There's no way that I had the strength or I had something inside of me that could have kept me from experiencing that, or sure. it was within my own strength. That There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah. A similar, similar thing for me, and you were there, was at Fred Smith's funeral. You know, you and I both spoke at his funeral. We were buddies that day. Oh, man. And, Me and you uh, were rehearsing, looking at oh, each other. Andrew had note after note, color-coded. I had a 
legal pad, notepad. <laughs> a legal notepad and a pen. Yeah. And uh, that was the first time I'd ever spoken at a funeral, not to mention for the legend that he was and is to me. Bingo. And, uh, you know, all day we were prepping and we left. It was at the campground. We left the campground, went to our church to eat lunch. I, I may have eaten two f- spoonfuls of food. I didn't. I was a nervous wreck. But uh, I knew what the funeral was going to be. I knew, and I told Janice that day, you know, before the funeral, I said, it's going to be epic. Mm-hmm. And it was. Yeah. And uh, she she later said, I had no idea what you meant when you said that until, like, until the funeral. But, um, you know, we get back to the campground prepping all day. <laughs> Yeah. And I went and I sat in the car and I wrote notes on what I wanted to say. I was still a nervous wreck, totally aimless. Yeah. And then as it began, you you and I were sitting on the platform. Things were were getting into motion. The funeral was beginning. And just as you're speaking, what you just spoke of, the perfect peace of God came over me just peace happiness even in a moment of sheer sadness and i turned to you as i'm getting better you're starting to fall apart (laughs) (laughs) and i looked at you and i said i'm ready and that was the first you know the first time that the peace of god came over me that wasn't me slobbering on an altar somewhere. Yeah. Um, and it's amazing. You know, someone later said, commented on, on what I had to say. I said, it wasn't me. It was God. Yeah. I mean, and, and it's the same thing. Uh, it's just the, the peace of God. Same thing happened at uh, I, two funerals <laughs> that I've spoken at. The other one was Papa Bud. I mean, two men. That you did I, outstanding that one. I, I watched it. I two, think that was on Facebook yeah, or something. Two two men that I hold as high as you can hold. Yeah. And the perfect piece through that as well. I mean, to the point that as soon as it's over, Bud's in heaven. Let's get there. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly. And, and mission accomplished. Yeah, mission accomplished. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, that's just that's just the. The fleshly part that's left here. I yeah. want to get where he's at. You're right, and that, and the only thing, and, and we in. need to dwell on that. You're right. We need to remind ourselves well, whatsoever that things place, of good report. Exactly. Yeah, that there is a place called heaven, and if you keep your eye set on heaven, you'll look over a lot of this nonsense. Nonsense that you that otherwise would catch your attention. You're right. You're so right about that. Um, there was an example of what true peace is. Uh, I heard the story uh, from a minister, um, and it was about an art teacher. Mm. And she challenged her students. She said, hey, I want you to draw what you define as true peace. And one of the students, it was a contest amongst Mm -hmm. the class. Mm Mm-hmm. One student drew this beautiful portrait of a beach. Sun is coming down right off the horizon. uh, Soft, cool waves. Seagulls flying in the breeze. Palm trees. Just perfect. And and somebody just laying out at the beach. That's peace and serenity. True peace. Mm -hmm. Another one drew this beautiful mountain range and a cabin just nestled in one of those mountains with a fire going, just snow just settling down. That was true peace to them, which I could probably agree to that Oh, one. yeah. Don't you, really care about can, the beach. You can have the beach. <laughs> yeah, I want the mountains and the yeah. snow. Yeah. And then there was another student that had this picture of a bird, a mother bird in her nest, in the cleft of a rock that were sleeping sound asleep, and outside is utter chaos, waves crashing against the rock, but in this cleft of this rock, they are nestled sound asleep. And the teacher said, 
that's the winner. True peace yeah. is when everything around you, the two it's times that you just mentioned, yeah. were not pleasant experiences. No. I, I didn't want to have a part in Fred's funeral because I didn't want him to die. Exactly. Um, I wish that we were here making memories with him right now. Sure. Brother Ron Salter told me the other day, he goes, you have a third co-host. I said, who is it? He said, Fred Smith. And, and I agree with him. He made such an impact on our lives, and, and it hurt us. I want my dad here. Can't wish him back. But the times that have hurt us the most and hurt people that are listening to this podcast the most, the things that we didn't want to experience, there was a return. God always gives us something in return. You didn't want your dad to die, but I'm going to give you something in return that you know you can hold on to that was God-given. If you think about it, when Job said, for the Lord takes and the Lord, the Lord gives and the Lord taketh away, but blessed be the name of the Lord. God is never going to take something from you that he's not going to give you something in its place. That's right. And right now, as we talk about the experience of the peace of God that passes all understanding, true peace is when everything is falling around you, but you as an individual are still up and still yes. standing yes. with the power of God. Yes. And I want to remember that. I want to remember that you can't do this on your own. No. This life, this this thing called life, God gives us these experiences because he knows we need it. Yes. He knows we need it. And you have, just like what you said and what we've already said, you have to remind yourself of that. You have to dwell on what's good, what's of good report, what's pure, and what's true. You have to dwell on that. This world has distractions every day for each one of us. We have to be reminded that God is in our lives. He has this thing called the perfect peace of God, mm-hmm. and he wants each and every one of us yep. to dwell in it. Yeah, what's our part? We have to dwell on it. Exactly. You just said it best. Yeah. That's our part. We have to remember that he's on our side, and if he's on our side, we're going to win. That's right. Peace, peace, wonderful, wonderful peace. peace. Coming down from the Father above, sweep over my spirit forever I pray. In fathomless billows of love. What does that last part mean? I have no idea. <laughs> but thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Pentecast Podcast. We love you. Have a great week. Over and under. <laughs>